our first series of the night ended with a 3-0 score. Tapas was able to defeat Gluck very uh, systematically, I guess, in terms of macro play, globals, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Our next series is going to be KSV Black, formerly MVP Black, up against Belize. And this could be an even potentially more one-sided match, g Cliff. Well, uh, oh, Black is still very salty after their initial, the very first game against Tempest, 0-3. And yeah. then after that, they're, even during interview with Rich last time, Rich was like, okay, thanks fans for coming down, but we lost last time pretty bad. We'll just work it out. But what's happening? And so they're not too excited. Even Kyocha, when he had passed by, he was like, hello. <laughs> they're not too hyped for yeah. now. And maybe they are really... Waiting for that versus Ballistics versus Miracle versus Blossom match coming up maybe in, in the coming weeks. But right now, they're feeling really down. Maybe they, it's time for them to really practice super hard yeah, I mean, and it's come a team, back into the game. It's a team that has always been in top two in Korea. And obviously because they're, they're like dead even at zero score now with the yes. 3 and then the 3-0. Mm -hmm. They're at the middle of the pack. So I think once they actually dominate and have defeated like every other team in the round round as much as they can, I think they'll feel better about it. Um, Today is the first step to going up the rankings. They will need that win today. Um, yeah, it was really just Ballistics normally that would be the only team to challenge them. Tempest beat them once last year in the first round robin, I think. And, like, that's it. I mean, they pretty much were only challenged by Ballistics or L5, depending mm -hmm. on which part of the, the year we were at. Um, but now they've been challenged by Tempest. So it's like they haven't even faced Ballistics yet. It could be tough for that match there as well. So it's going to be, uh, you know, a, a kind of a testing time, like a, a trying time for this team um, to understand the meta where they're normally always ahead of everybody else and, uh, you know, kind of climb back up the ladder should be a relatively easy climb, but still mentality wise, you you could never wipe the stain of a three Oh uh, of by Tempest to you off. You can never really fully get that out of your mind. Mm -hmm. Not until you've, you've gone to Eastern clash and you're trying to win that. Yeah, that's going to be, I think that's what they're looking for. Their revenge at the Eastern clash, very likely both team Tempest, and uh, Black will be going to Eastern Clash. So I think that's exactly what they're practicing for. Maybe we'll have a different meta as possibly we're going to have Mayev uh, coming in Eastern. I think that's about time for the Western Eastern Clash. I think that's going to be a big difference there as also Blaze may rise up slowly into the front lines. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not feeling it at the moment. It's not... It's not that it's not getting that hot, you know. Blaze not really kicking in. Once yeah. yesterday, I was expecting few, at least few, few times today, like the first match even, but not no test at all. Even Tempest, yeah, not not really using Blaze at all. Yeah, he just he he feels kind of in a way like a little bit outclassed by some of the other solo laners that can do more than he can. And if you want a tanky solo laner with good wave clear, like probably should have picked Lyric instead. So. In terms of main tank, he wasn't used that way in Korea a single time, so... Yeah, you know, it, it's a little... It's a little, like... Weird that he has gotten so little play. It's very rare that we see release heroes to not get play. Um, usually release heroes are overtuned and see a lot of play, but... We saw Feliz on screen for just a moment. They obviously brought us to a fifth game against... Uh, against Gluck in the opening match, and... See how well Hanaten does in this game. I think he is definitely one of the strong points of the team, OJ, as well, with some strong plays uh, and good saves, good peels uh, for his teammates. But, you know, we're just starting things off. We're about to go into draft and things like that. But I think this team is going to struggle against Black. But they should know that today they should not have come with any expectations. Um, and if they did that, then. At least they're going to walk away from tonight's match feeling like they learned something, they gained something. Mm -hmm. Let's see if they do. And here is KSP Black. And heard Rich's. He really toned down when he wanted to carry as himself. Sometimes even. Uh, that really hurt in game number two, I believe, uh, versus Tempest. Where Rich and Reset changed, kind of swapped their heroes. And Rich now is saying that. For the team, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to do the Haka all the time. And I'm not going to change at all. It's for the team. So he has changed a lot. He was almost calling lots of people, calling Rich selfish, making the other all other his teammate change role because of because he wanted that hero, because he wanted to play that hero. But lots of times last year also, but now he's willing to go into the Haka, make that key play as the Haka really stick to the team with the team to make the team comp complete. Yeah, I mean. Sometimes individual flashy plays are what get you recognition and what, you know, make you a star. And Rich is considered by 
pretty much everyone universally to be the best heroes of the Storm player in the world, but at the same time, uh, sometimes that style of play is not needed. Sometimes the macro play, sometimes the power that a hero like Dahaka or Passive can give you is better. So we're starting off with BOE. It's Feliz's map pick a brave one against MP Black, and we will have the normal bands Braxis and Volskaya. So no Volskaya in this second series, G Clef. But uh, picking BOE against Black, you know, a, a bit of a scarier pick, definitely. Then again, Black has about 90% win rate uh, across the board on all maps, so... Yeah, you know, you pick your battles, but Battle for the Maturity is one that they were most scary on in 2016, most people would say. Now with Bala basically out of the meta, and we do have lots of other ones coming in, even Samuro sometimes appearing on this map to Chungtando Immortal. That's still possible, I think, in today's match, or more like more likely Black going to pick Samuro, possibly. Even Hanzo, there are so many heroes who can do so much damage onto Immortal now, so it's not just Artanis, not just not just few of those, even Martel. There's so many options and choices. Let's see how they start the draft. They're gonna ban out Greymane to start off. Greymane removed here, interesting. Greymane, pretty much a must pick in every game. Just because he's so powerful. We'll see the insta lock of Hanzo. I get the feeling this is gonna be a fast draft. Um, Feliz responding here, uh, normally, a lot of teams would grab the G Uther Genji in this case because you've empowered the, the Genji with the Uther. You have one of the strongest and highest win rate supports in the game. Uh huh. But like against Black, that's a, a tough call to make. Black's positioning and Black's team fighting is so powerful. Do you really want to try to use a hyper carry hero like Genji in this meta against this team? Mo well, a lot of other teams might say yes, but Feliz is definitely at least for the first 30 seconds of this pick phase are saying no. Well, I think it's it's definitely an okay one with Genji Uther pair up, but I think we need to start moving away with that pair. Maybe just pick up Uther with something else, just picking a new. You did it, G Clef. I you said a new Brock. It. You started. You, you said the beginning of new Brock before you locked in. Yes. Still means you were I won. Won. <laughs> So from that's... the very first game, I feel like they already did their homework. They're starting to move away from that old pair. Of course, Genji is still very strong, but if you have Uther, that already takes the power away, so Black's less likely going to pick that Uther, and Anubarak is just rising up so highly with the Cocoon. Well, as, as fantastic as resets Genji is, picking it against Uther has failed for every team so far. I don't think that it will be seen. We're going to see a different type of DPS here. Possibly the Tychus, maybe like in the later part of the draft, and for now, we're looking probably at like a solo laner uh, in this rotation. Burden will be picked. Oh my god. They are going to do it. They are crazy. 0% win rate across the board uh, in Korea versus Uther. And a very low win rate in general is Genji at the moment, despite having a very high involvement rate. He will be played by reset in this game I think against Uther. Overall in all HCC, including China, around low 40% win rate on Genji. Yeah, I mean, he's just... He's highly picked, but... Sometimes he's picked up the wrong compositions. Mm -hmm. They don't have Uther to empower the Genji either. Like, I don't like this draft for KSV at the moment. Let's see when it finishes what it means, but... Panning the Rhaegar, uh, that's an interesting one. Just trying to limit the support for Genji, I suppose. Like, Yep, I think that's the way to go. They have a lot, uh, they're going for the support choke. Not just the Lucio, they need to protect Hanzo and, and Genji at the same time. And they have a Nubarak already, so Rhaegar was the one. That's going to bother them. What do you make of the Tracer ban? I don't fully understand that one, to be honest. Like, that is not something that I was thinking about at all. Like, this is not a Uther Task Tracer composition. Like, that was not even a thing. Well, they... At least it's not in what we've known. Maybe in scrims it's a thing, but not in Korea. Mm -hmm. Maybe Feliz was trying to do some Tracer bombs right after the cocoon. Some pair-ups with the CC uh, that can actually harass Hanzo a lot, but oftentimes actually Tracer gets is the one that, that gets harassed by the by the basic attack is if Hanzo goes for that redemption build. Sonya makes her appearance now in this series. Will be the uh, solo top laner on this map. Four man at the bottom. And we're still just waiting to see what the range DPS is going to be here against the Genji Hanzo. Do not want to see any sort of crazy Zeratul play. Okay, it's going to be Vala, so strong for the objective. 
Not as strong as Hanzo though, then no one would argue. Let's see if they want more damage or just go with their old favorite and fit in Tastar at the very end. I think that can still work because they did pick up Bala now. That's a that's a a pick that can work, but it feels so dated. But then again, KSV is running an unusual comp that uh, has. I mean, I feel like there is merits to running the Tastar against this, but. Hunter doing a lot of steady damage, getting to the, for those dragon blades. Artanis. So this was the this was the trump card. This was the unusual pick coming into this draft. The Artanis here will be w Rich's hero. So that's going to help them win races. It is going to uh, allow for some big plays to be made if the swaps are good. With Hanzo doing insane amounts of damage, this is definitely going to be. Now that we've seen the Artanis, it's like, no question it's going to be redemption. There's almost no question before, but like now you know. It's going to be a redemption build. Everyone has been... I feel like there's this air of... This, there's this feeling of the best way to deal with Hanzo is some sort of backline dive. Like, the Anubarak is really strong, gets the people believe in Korea. Zeratul has been picked even with double melee to try to kill the Hanzo. Um, but I think Feliz's best bet here is to actually take a second DPS. One with sustained damage. Tries to win those longer fights. Sure, they're fighting against Malfurion, but they have Vala. They could alternatively get Burst, try to Burst through Malfurion heals, but Genji's got Deflect, for example. Hanzo's positioning is going to be correct almost all of the time here. Um, there's probably going to be Sake playing that hero, right? They are just hellbent on the double support yep. Vala here. They do have Vala, so it, it is very outdated. Just like game number, just like the last game we had from Gluck. Like you yeah, look Tassadar. at you look at this Feliz comp and and if you told me if you just took a picture of that and told me like ask me Wolf like what period is this like when was this screenshot taken I'd probably tell you like September 2017 mm -hmm. but uh, nope gonna be used in this 2018 match right now there are there are merits to right it's a very strong composition and none of these heroes were uh, really tweaked in massive ways since the double sport meta it's just that players have figured out how to play around it better and double DPS means double damage on the Immortals means better racing. The comp of Feliz will not be able to dive, and the Q build Vala doesn't gain as much. Oh, uh, there's a pause. The Q Vala does not gain as much mm -hmm. for... Um, Do you also hear that weird sound? Yeah. Oh, it's gone now, but... That like was weird. Maybe that was the error. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I thought it was going crazy for a second there. Um... The Q build volley isn't going to gain that much from double sports. What I'm trying to say here at the end of the day, where these crazy pause coming through and mm -hmm. weird wonky sounds in my ears, but um, I, there's arguments to be made for it. Again, like the sustained damage volley can do in the race that she would do against other comps, but like Tastar's shields are going to help against Genji for a brief amount of time, and you know volley can be divine shielded, obviously, but our task is going to take. Um, his level one uh, damage increase. Uh, I don't know why that word, the name of the talent is not coming to me. Amateur opponent. Um, and we're going to see some uh, flip attempts uh, coming through from Rich. And there's high potential for kills on this, uh, you know, set of heroes that do not have a lot of um, a lot high health pools. It's weird sounds continuing my headset. Um, <laughs> and with the armor reduction coming through from Hanzo, like Anubarak's front line is not going to necessarily be enough for them. I don't know. I see the comp and I see what it what it means and what it meant in 2017, but I don't see what it means for this game right now. That's what I'm trying to say. At the end see, of the day. it is kind of a uh, oh, another PP. It is kind of unusual for Black to have this kind of draft. Of course, Murden and last time last time when they picked Malfiri, they did lose that match uh, because they were trying to go for with the sustain. It was not really working out against the burst damage. But on the other hand, they, other than Sonya, they don't really have the burst damage here. Unless Vala goes with the W build, which was the pair for with Aureo. But without the Aureo, I think, will just be the Q, of course. Well, because if I had to guess, by the way, it looks like this is a headset problem. <laughs> oh, Wolf, you're smart. <laughs> you guessed it right. No 3-2-3 three, three yet, guys. <laughs> this game's not even in. To the first fight. Well, he typed a, a instead of PP, which means that um, if this were a Casper sanction event, he would be, they would receive a warning. It'd be like a lot of discussion. Like maybe they'd like lose first pick and map for, like, for game two. Like, But 
It's fine. Not, not going to be the case here. We're just going to sort out the issues. I guess Sake's got a problem too. Um, looks like for the members of Feliz, like, you know, Frankel's like a little bit tired, but everything else is good. Mm -hmm. Everyone's comfortable. Ready to go. Yeah. Only one white keyboard. Yeah, that's the same color as my keyboard. About the same same size as well. Can't tell if it's ten kilos or not, though. I think it is blocking. ten kilos. I think so. That's the best for gaming. Yeah. Well, it's the most portable, and I guess, like, it has less keys and stuff. And you, you have a lot more room for your mouse if you have that long one. Yeah. The HTC mouse pad, as you can see, one of the best ones out there. Yeah, I still use I I have my HTC mouse pad, um, as my like uh I actually use it because it's so long and it's so big I use it as kind of like a, a rest for my wrists on my secondary computer like on my on my MacBook where I like do writing and stats analysis and stuff when I'm not playing games, then on my regular computer I have my WCS Championship Series uh, oh. StarCraft mouse pad, um, because I obviously I love StarCraft I used to cast that game and I uh. I think it's also the most comfortable mouse pad I've ever used, so it's also huge. I got esports mouse pads. OJ, he looks like he's gonna write a book uh, if I did it with that look right now. <laughs> Seems like the problem solved. For Sake nodding his head for now. Oh, they did get the new KSV jersey. Yeah, Very it's, uh, it is new. It's uh, the colors a little bit flashier. They added this. Uh, like thing on the back, like it's kind of like it's it's almost like he's wearing like a necklace that's not fully completed around his neck. But he's got this kind of, <laughs> and it gives the illusion of like chest plates or something. All right, finally well. back in game. It is Kuvala, which means and redemption, of course, from Hanzo. They have enough damage onto the immortal with the amateur opponent. So, we are now in game. Amateur opponent, as you say. Everything else standard. Kuvala. Artanis versus Sonya is actually kind of a funny matchup because Artanis is so finicky. Like, I feel like it's a winning matchup for Sonya most of the time. However, like, if you don't understand exactly the threshold for Artanis' shields and you misstep in that moment, or Artanis swaps you into a bad mini wave or into uh, cannon towers, like, you can lose the matchup to Artanis, but normally it's going to be, like, a, a me medium advantage to Sonya. Uh, but there, there are moments where Rich can outplay. Actually, wait, Rich is playing Hanzo. I didn't realize that until now. So that means that reset, no, is on Genji. Kyocha is playing Artanis, and that's not good. In my memory, Kyocha was solo killed a couple of times. Let's um, see how he plays. Like, <laughs> I don't want to judge him too early, and this is of uh -huh. course against Feliz, but like, this has normally been a bad sign when when Rich says I'm only gonna play Dahaka. I actually just want to make team plays. And then plays Hanzo instead. Almost hit that Sonic Arrow on Frankel. Uh, wouldn't have gotten him the kill, but it might have allowed his teammates to do a dive with reset. Gonna go ahead and take this camp as they've won the uh, the battle of this four man for the moment. Uther coming back from spawn, so a little bit of a reprieve here. Meanwhile, Sony is starting to finally overtake Artanis in the top lane, as you can see. Not Ooh. going to be too powerful, of course, with the amateur opponent. Can Push the wave a little bit faster, but against Sonya, it's going to be a tough matchup. <coughs> Unless you can actually get that swap into the turret somehow. Not going to be making that mistake. It's a pretty hard thing to do as a solo laner. Yeah. Look at that. He finished it in 220. Already 12 stacks on the redemption. Yep. Just shooting people a lot, revealing them a lot. I mean, it's, it's, it's just for the Immortal. Great timing. Now he's got that attack speed to win the race. Have reset swap up here for a moment to prevent the rotation of Hanaten. And yep, just scouts it out because he obviously has the mobility. Just come over here, clear this camp up. Tist goes to prevent any. Look, look at how Tist is moving. Just making sure no one comes anywhere near this area. Sonic Arrow. They have such good vision control with Tist plus Rich's Sonic Arrows. Like everything Feliz is doing is an open book. Look at Tist's position. They don't even know where he is, but he knows where they are. Comes around, flanks. Trying to get the pick on the task, force out the stasis. So well done. That was incredible. I think they're going to get the pick too. And that's got zoning Genji. Plus Muradin just jumping over everywhere with that some CC onto Nubarak. It's going to be second kill. Even more reset is looking for when he's also low. Terrifying playing against this kind of coordination. Are you kidding me? 
They controlled vision using the sonic arrows. Tiss knows where they are. He backs away, sneaks into the vents there, the line of sight blockers, goes into the second line of sight blockers, and then Tastar is always the target. It's a win no matter what if you gank Tastar because you force him to use dimensional shift. That means he can't be in range of anybody because that's on cooldown. It's a long mm -hmm. cooldown. And then you can try to get the pick afterwards, and they're in position to do it. That was so coordinated. That was so well done. Tinavala pushing in as a handle, but way too... Almost overstepped as the CC was landing off from Valkyrie. But now OJ already taking too much damage. Not just from Hanzo, every one of their members of Black here. I mean, this is actually this just like, board. Black is like, don't even stand kind of close to me right now or I will kill you. <laughs> Half a level lead now, three kills to zero. Nearly fully shielded Immortal, 13k.7 on this Red Immortal spawning. Even as an Anubarak, like, the damage coming in, this, all the spell damage and the basic attack even more from Hanzo was insane. Artanis was not even there the entire time, just doing what he's doing on the other side with the Immortal, just chunking that down. Almost fully shielded. First Immortal already leveled up. Black is trying to speedrun this. Yeah. I mean, at this stage, with all the poke they have with Genji, like, and he has redemption, this could damage the keep wall. <laughs> Big Fleece cannot oh, lose anybody! Uh-oh! Frankel! Uber comes in, but it was way too late, Vala. Focus, fire, and Risa dives they in. They only have Tastar to deal with this Immortal now. This will definitely damage the keep wall. Look at Sake. Just trying to make sure the minion shots... He's like, just absorbing them as much as he can, and like, moving forward here now, Tist is doing the better job on that. Oh, wait, wait, no, 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 go back. I want to see... I want to see the, uh... Oh, the perfect storm. We're hitting, we're hitting the bolts, but I want to see the damage on Rich at the moment. Okay, look at Reset's positioning. Just trying to ma make them forget he's there so that we can see another Storm Bolt, another Root. Damage 22,000. That is tr nearly, it's just over oh double. Oh my goodness. Vala's. At 540. Double Vala's damaged. 9,000 to 22,000 hero damage at the moment. Let me say it one more time. 22,000 hero damage at the moment. So, taking the top camp as well, with the rest of his scatter arrow build, we're going to see a potential pick on the camp chat. Nope, he gets out. Um, so he gets that top camp. That's going to be more pushes towards the uh, the top keep wall, which is already slightly damaged. Mm -hmm. Black's only cost of 10. They will have it before the next Immortal. Very unlikely Feliz will be able to say the same. And well, now they're going to look for an invade here right as 10 hits. It's an early camp, and Feliz is trying to catch... Do this by two cats to rotation a little bit. Black at 10. Oh, just going in. Oh, just a tiny second late. They were, they were waiting for that level 10 mark there. Taking the blind on Artanis to help guarantee that they win the race. Blinding Vala, removing all that damage. When you have one DPS and the driver damage is auto attack. So uh -huh, 1d4. Yeah, do you see those arrows too? I think he hit everyone except Aimer. Not even close. That's a rough situation. Maybe if they had Cocoon, of course, Hanzo will be away at that moment, but... Kyocha's just shoving this to the keep. He's playing on RPG by himself, but Sonya on the other side. Either Sonya... They can't even have Sonya join the fight because they'll be losing EXP even more because yeah. Artanis is already on the other side. That's why they're always trying to rotate to make sure they can like kind of intercept any Feliz members rotating up because... If they don't go to stop Kyocha's push, then they lose the keep right eventually. So that's why Black is just basically doing everything correctly right now at the moment in terms of their positioning to prevent those rotations while they have that level 10 advantage. It'll be a little bit tougher once that's no longer the case, but just trying to push this wall down to get 10. Might get punished for it, though, as Artanis continues to solo this Immortal. He's actually rotating down now as we're at halftime. Frank Frankel is definitely dead. Ooh, E-star. <laughs> no, is he actually is Ooh. he actually gonna get out? They don't care too much about Valakas because they got the fully hundred percent shielded immortal. Now. This is not correct, by the way. <laughs> Positioning. Oh, oh my I get found God. Out by reset. Oh my goodness. Well. Rip. I think this is gonna be a perfect game, G Cuff. I had to guess. Perfect immortal health. Um. Yeah, fully shielded. <laughs> Like, oh, man. you know something has gone wrong when your Vala is trying to sneak between two forts 
in the enemy's side of Battle for the Eternity, you know something has gone wrong positioning-wise. Like, and then the shuriken <laughs> comes through from reset, and it's like, time's up, buddy. Oh man! You just the moment you realize your destiny. That's the saddest moment ever. I mean, yeah. Well, well, they say he hit ten. Malfurion, he's holding on to that potential tranquility to end, you know. Maybe just for just to sustain at the very end. Let's see how far this Emoto could they're trying to go in with the stun. With there the it stun. is. Yeah, just keeping there. everybody healed so the Immortal can go through and do the real damage. Root coming through on the Hanaten. Seems like they're not really forcing in as they can just play it safe with this Immortal still ha having 80% their game now with the Death Star. Barely survives with the shift. Reset. And early that, shield. That Divine Shield does again. nothing. Cocoon's done here. Frankel, he is in trouble. Look at how much damage Rich is doing. Look at that damage. Oh my god, he disappeared. Reset. He's on Frankel. This core is under attack. Anaten trying to hit as many as he can with that Whirlwind to try to heal up. Not going to be enough. That's the double. Make it a triple kill. And Feliz will be perfect gamed here in game one. Four structures to none. Eight kills to zero in a 10-minute game. KSV Black is going to start the series off 1-0. They failed. They passed the 10-minute mark by three seconds. Yeah. It was not a sub-10-minute game. Mm -hmm. Well, there you have it. That was a disaster of a game for Feliz, and it was based on Rich's Hanzo. Doesn't bode well for facing off against stronger teams later on in the league. If Rich has to swap, it does weaken the solo lane. But maybe this was a case where Coach has practiced the Artanis for situations like this specifically on this map. Remember, Artanis was in the last rotation with Malfurion. And uh, that gave them a pretty tanky front line. Obviously, they had the Artanis there and the Mur Muradin, which are very difficult to kill front liners. So Malfurion made sense with this comp more than the Volskaya Foundry comp we saw in our previous series. So... Yeah, I mean... What would that happen? And the only threat that Kanzo kind of could have had is if Sonya was missing from the lane, but she was up there the entire time. And the only thing Hanzo has to worry about is Anubarak when he dives in. Rich, he just moved away from that dive, and he was doing even more damage. I want to see how much damage he did at the end. Maybe probably yeah. like more than 40k by now, because he had like 22 at by uh, 5 and 530, right? Yeah. Maybe 50k, who knows? It was insane damage just coming out from Rich. Not just Rich, all the members. So Genji just going in right when the CC is there. Re Reset was looking for that angle right after Mafurian. It worked out this time. They had the sustain. Well, Feliz, what are they going to do now? It wasn't a problem with the draft per se, but when they were losing Tastar or losing Bala, like everything just fell apart. And the target was always Tast, who still has amazing uh, dive-ins that were just like so well coordinated. His sneaks into the vents and sets up that first gank that we saw that was really impressive. Um, when you're losing your DPS, and sometimes in the first part of the fight and you're doing double support, then you probably shouldn't run this comp against this team if they're able to make this happen. Mind you, with really just Muradin, as the only CC, and then Malfurion sometimes get the roots, but it's mostly just the storm bolts, and then the coordination that comes in with the Genji, yeah. uh, and the Hanzo damage, where he got redemption at like two minutes and two seconds yeah, in two the game. Twenty. Um. So, I, I don't want to see any more double support against a team that's this coordinated and this good at picking uh, players. So, that's uh, that's my feel on this. Yeah, Tasta was way too threatened from the beginning. Reset was just coming in all the time, and when the shift is. Basically, the team fight was over at that moment, you know, and that happened every single time. They know the weakness of double support so much that it cannot work. Seems like open division teams who had just came to HGC still need some time to adjust here. Yeah. Big time. It's tough facing off against two-time back-to-back world champions, MVP Black. But they're not out of it yet. They will have two or more opportunities to come back. If they fail both of those, then the series is going to end with a... Sour note for this uh, this team that mm -hmm. has worked hard through Open Division to get here. MVP Black, or sorry, KSV Black, uh, drafting Hanzo, prioritizing that, putting Rich on the Hanzo. I'm curious if we'll see that be changed in further drafts. Like, will Rich go back to the top lane when they're still running Hanzo? Because 
that's something that uh, you know we're yet to be seen. In fact, I want to look back. This is one of the rare case because uh, Kyocha is the one that plays Artinus all the time. He and Sake does did play lots of support as the double support meta came in. So that was the shift. I guess that really happened, and also reset and got to play on his favorite Genji, so it all worked out yeah. in a way. Do you remember uh, the game on Towers of Doom? You cast with Rally Jaffa. Uh, it was the only game, other game that uh, KSV Blacks had this Hanzo set up with, and that was with Uther and Nubrak, Tahaka and yes. Tychus. Was it Rich on the Hanzo, or was he on Tahaka? He wasn't Tahaka. He Dhaka, wasn't Tahaka. Right? Yes. Okay, so yeah, I, I didn't think so. I obviously I didn't cast that game, but I watched the VOD mm -hmm. um, that night. So yeah, I think this is a specific case. It worked well, and Rich obviously is a very good player. Specific on case any hero, for the map, it worked perfectly, of course. And they were against an opponent; they knew it was going to be an easier time picking that. Maybe not, because I still remember Kyocha just getting solo killed by someone else. I don't remember exactly, but I remember it was one of the. He was in the bottom lane or sure. tennis. He died like three times, maybe at least twice alone. I mean, Kyocha did play melee. Uh, flex during the time uh, during the six month period that Rich was retired mm -hmm. uh, in phase one of last year, so he has that experience playing these heroes. Uh, not really Artanis so much, but mostly like Sonya, um, a little bit of Malthale and Zeratul and stuff like that. But going into our second map here, it is going to be Tomb of the Spider Queen. Actually, the map.